Welcome to the first intermission. It's To The Point with Jen, Kelly, and Kevin. And a couple of things on the Toronto-Ottawa matchup before we get to that power play goal by Ottawa. The matchups and Jake Sanderson caught your eye. Yeah, Jake Sanderson, I wish we would have showed some of his clips from his first NHL game because making a lot of simple plays and building trust in the coaching staff to put him out there. He's out in the last minute of the game. Now he's on the second unit power play, gets his first assist that we're going to show in a little bit, but look really good again for another period. And DJ Smith also going with uh, that fourth line against yeah. Matthews. So I, I noticed it, but Simmer also noticed mm -hmm. it, and he made mention of it. The five shifts that we all counted where that fourth line did a pretty good job holding Austin Matthews and Mitch Martin. Like Moving forward, I think you're not going to see that that matchup as much because you're playing with fire but certainly Toronto should have came out with at least a goal that period okay that's a lot go ahead show your uh, power play goal me again yeah eh? yes yeah, you yeah. too <laughs> so as far as like taking what you get and moving the puck with a purpose it's a great power play so they're moving around they're picking on camp that's why he's highlighted watch all the skating he does sucks him in low to high right and this puck comes over and now we're going to establish a shot from the point that's Jake Sanderson that's important because you can't just pass the puck around and not shoot you got to keep the penalty killers honest again suck in the penalty killer now when this goes to Drew Kampf is a little late going over there because one it's a great pass but two he's tired and Drew, some great touches, great decision-making with the passes. And for Stutzla, we talked about him before the game. Here's a guy, he's going to make exciting things happen on the ice. Great composure with the puck. You know, spins around Matthews, enters the zone, draws the pressure and dishes at just the right time. And this one again, heads up play, complete awareness, just a little cut back and a beautiful passing play with Kachuk and Batherson that leads to a quality scoring chance. So really dynamic player, great awareness and crisp passing. Imagine that. I'm going to talk goaltending. Hmm. Leafs, Samsonov. So you think about, he's only played four periods, so you don't want to be too critical, but the three goals that he's given up all have gone through him, and that's what really bugs goaltenders. So here's the first one by Dowd. You can tell by the reaction button from Samsonov, he wasn't happy. Johansson later in the game, same thing right through him. Now this one tonight, you know, it's a great shot. It's a great release by Pinto, but if you look at it, basically hits the middle of the net. Kind of goes through him. So he's not going to be overly happy with that. But having said that, come on. Give him a break, Kevin. Can I ask Kelly a question? Sure. I know I'm not the host, but I think I've asked this before. With with Murray being out, and we don't know how long, would that give Samsonov confidence, or would that make him think, oh, my God, like there's no it's both. safety net? I've been in that situation where I was taking over from Billy Smith, and same thing. I was, like, both excited and both nervous. Back to you, Ron. But, <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. The uh, goal is great in the uh, game at Washington tonight, and Allen's been amazing. Montalbaum and the captain. Suzuki's a big story there. Whereas, over in Winnipeg, Rick Bonus, and by the way, hello to Rick, he's feeling great. Yeah, good. Well, not great, but he's getting great. <laughs> and uh, he decided not to go with the captain at the start. Obviously, Daryl Sutter, same decision. Here's Daryl Sutter of the Calgary Flames. It's really, really difficult to be a captain of a hockey team in Canada. It's totally different than if you're in the sun or the somewhere where it's not a hockey market. This is totally different. There's a lot of pressure. You just don't say, well, that's our captain. So it's, it's way different in the league. That's why, that's why not every team has a captain, quite honest, because it's a big burden. You know, you want the player to be a really good player. You don't want them to carry a, be carrying the cross around all the time. A couple things. If you're a leader and, and you want to be in that position to be the voice, then if you have the right person. But you don't want to just name a captain for the sake of naming a captain. I feel like now it's more about the leadership group and the ones that are successful. It's a number of voices. It's just not one voice that they're hearing in a locker room. I feel like it's the same for coaching staff. You know, your assistant coaches have to have a voice. So I feel like teams now, it's more about collaboration than only one person to represent your team and to lead your team. Word that stuck out for me, burden. And that's what I think it is. And so you have to have the right person that can handle all the situations when there's turmoil all around. Now, I was spoiled. My first First three captains, Dennis Potvin, Brent Sutter, Wayne Gretzky. Doesn't get any better than that. Great leadership at the top. So I coach at a really high level right now. U15 AAA, high school hockey. And what I did this year is co-captains. It's more of a college thing, but to, we, to we alleviate the burden. Yeah. yeah, two captains, right? Spread the burden out a yeah, little bit I in the like Canadian it. city. Mm -hmm. Just just a thought. Yeah. Well, we have two captains on this show, but one of them is <laughs> going to do Monday nights instead, just because he has a fancy new studio. David Amber, how about Monday nights? What's up? Hey, Ron, I'm definitely going to miss the magic of Saturday nights, but I am excited about our new show, Rogers Monday Night Hockey, here in our new Rogers Virtual Studio. Great matchups on the first Monday. Coyotes, Leafs, Penguins, and Habs. Our coverage starts at 6.30 Eastern, and we have some new voices as well. Anson Carter, Cassie Campbell-Pascal, and yes, the rookie, Keith Yandel. Ron. 
David, really excited for Monday night's uh, the national broadcast and for you to join us in the playoffs and on special occasions, of course. Eli Paul Freeman, captain of the Air Centennials, passed away a month ago. Uh, and I remember uh, his great-grandfather, Dalt, had one of the most beautiful lines. Don't ask me how he died. Ask me how he lived. And everybody loved the way he lived. Joe Serpa over at the Kitchener Rangers uh, to sit with Brett, Eli's dad, and see Brett cheer for you, Joe. It's going to be great. Uh, Scott Walker coached Eli, U14, U15, U16 in Cambridge with a powerful Hawks team. Scott Walker's over in Guelph where four of his buddies play. Eli was one of those great captains who, you know, he wasn't uh, entering the fray. He was the fray. Eli, you showed us in life and in hockey the way to play. Much love to you and your family. Tammy, Eli, Brett, Ella, the Paul Freemans. We love you.